Where is the Ark of the Covenant, this holy relic that was with us since the Old Testament, since the time of the Exodus of Moses? The Ark of the Covenant, believed to be buried somewhere under Jerusalem in Israel, we know that it had very valuable contents. It had the two plaques of the Ten Commandments, it had a jar of manna, and it had the budding rod of Aaron, the high priest. But because of the conquests of the Babylonians over the ancient city of Jerusalem and the destruction of the temple, as that was uh, coming, they hid the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant lost for over, what, 2,700 years. But one expert believes that this holy relic could be lurking under Jerusalem, deep under the city. We know that Jerusalem has been built over seven times. It's a very ancient location. The Ark of the Covenant is said to house the stone tablets Moses carried to the Israelites from Mount Sinai from their journey out of Egypt during the Exodus. That took place about uh, 1,500 BC. Now, on the stone tablets, we said, were the Ten Commandments, the Decalogue, given to God's chosen people, written by God's hand on those tablets. The Ark was held in Solomon's temple in Jerusalem until the siege of Jerusalem by the Babylonians in 586 BC. Now, after the temple was destroyed, the Ark vanished, never to be seen again. But Professor Tom Meyer, a public speaker and college lecturer, believes there are clues left about the Ark's secret whereabouts. He said that it was a common for the temple, the temples in ancient Near East to have a designated place for sacred religious objects, which were the property of the deity worshipped there. And according to the Holy Bible, the temple in Jerusalem, built by King Solomon, had such designated storage areas hidden from the public eye in the bowels under the Temple Mount. There are various caverns and passageways, secret passageways, known to the high priests and the Levites. Now, he said it was in secret chambers like these, whose whereabouts were guarded by a select few, that the Ark of the Covenant could have been hidden before the final Babylonian invasion of Judah in 586 BC, which ended with the destruction of the Jerusalem Temple of Solomon, the first Temple of Solomon. Because after they returned from their captivity, Babylonian captivity, they rebuilt the Temple. Now, this is the first destruction of the uh, Temple. The Bible lists the many treasures plundered, carried by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar, but these biblical records do not mention the Ark of the Covenant, the most important of the artifacts carried away, suggesting it may have never been carried away, never been stolen and plundered. The plundered treasures were later sent back to Jerusalem on the order of King Cyrus when the Hebrews, after 70 years, returned to Jerusalem to rebuild the second temple. And uh, under King Cyrus's order, the second Jewish temple was rebuilt and restored. In total, some 5,400 relics, objects were returned to the Israelites. But again, there is no mention of the Ark of the Covenant among the relics. Professor Mayer said Jewish sources in the Second Temple period tell us that after the Ark of the Covenant went missing, the Holy of Holies, the Ark's former resting place, remained empty in the Second Temple period. So the Ark was not replaced on the Holy of Holies. All that remained in the holy spot was a stone jutting above the ground at the height of three fingers. This is where the Ark of the Covenant once stood, and this is where the Muslim Dome of the Rock is now resting today. Now, um, what Mayer says is based on over a millennium of Jewish Tradition, Maimonides, the famous 12th century AD Jewish sage, stated that when Solomon built the first Jewish temple, he was aware that it would ultimately be destroyed. Therefore, he constructed a chamber in which the Ark of the Covenant could be hidden below the temple surface in deep maze-like vaults. So there's also a mention of the Israeli king Joshua hiding the Ark in a secret underground tunnel under Jerusalem's Temple Mount, under an area known as the wood storage in the 7th century BC. 
Professor Meyer said, this wood storage area is perhaps located halfway between the site of the former Holy of Holies, where the Dome of the Rock now stands, and modern day Golden Gate. The Golden Gate, as we know, is uh, where the, uh, our Lord Jesus Christ came into Jerusalem riding on a donkey one week before his passion on Palm Sunday, and later that gate was sealed by a Muslim uh, conqueror of, each of uh, Jerusalem. It is still sealed today. Outside of the Golden Gate, we have uh, an area of a cemetery. They have tombs there, but the Golden Gate is sealed. Now, this underground vault, he says, is known as Chamber Number 12. This chamber, some 40 feet underground, was last explored in 1865 by the English archaeologist Charles Wilson. Charles Wilson journaled the following about his explorations of, cha of Chamber 12, cut into the rock, in a low doorway that leads to a flight of steps. He says this passage is covered by semicircular vaulting, and at the end are the remains of another doorway blocked by earth. And he goes on to explain the most famous archaeological object yet to be found could still be resting quietly in the subterranean chambers behind this dirt-sealed doorway just below the hustle and bustle of the thousands of pilgrims daily touring the Temple Mount, he says. Now, it remains to be seen whether the Ark of the Covenant will ever be discovered. By some accounts, the Ark made its way to Ethiopia before the Babylonian invasion and is now hidden in the St. Mary of Zion Cathedral in Aksum. Church authorities, however, do not allow for the supposed relic to be studied for its authenticity. Professor Meyer is a lecturer, public speaker, and scripture expert who has memorized more than 20 books from the Holy Bible. And um, all right, so it could be hidden. Uh, obviously, this should be explored. Please leave your comments. This is by uh, Sebastian Ketley on Express UK. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.